Sean Plew from Hitters.com. So we're going to take a look at rotational hitting versus linear hitting and see if they really describe what's happening in a major league swing and if there's a better way to teach it. So really one of the prominent major leaguers that uses a rotational swing is Giancarlo Stanton. And some of the main points for a rotational swing are to slot the bat. So the bat is level with the shoulder plane. And from there, you're going to use the kinetic chain. Uh, lower body leads the upper body. And you're going to spin around your spine and turn to create power. So I agree with some of those concepts, but uh, we'll get into the weaknesses of, of that approach. First of all, the rotational approach doesn't address the early bat speed that hitters will create. Here's Ted Williams. So obviously he's not just slotting the bat. The bat's moving through that slot position. And this is the position that I'm talking about right in here where the bat's pretty much even with the shoulder plane. And from here you will see the body turn. But the swing starts well before that. The bat's moving through this position and that allows him to create early bat speed and bat speed independent of the turning of the shoulders. And that helps with adjustability and being able to hit every ball consistently and being able to start your swing early but commit to the swing late. So if we can create bat speed without spinning our body or pushing our hands forward, that's a huge advantage and you'll see that from a lot of the best hitters of all time. So that's one thing that rotational hitting fails to address. This is Ted Williams. Um, you'll see the same type of swing in Barry Bonds and Hank Aaron and Babe Ruth. So let's take a look at Stanton here. He's in the slot position. He's twisting sideways. And a lot of times what happens is you'll have a ton of power to the pull side. And where the weakness of this type of swing is, in adjusting to off speed or the outside pitches, a lot of your energy is spinning and taking you off the ball or, or sideways. So you'll see him clip the ball or hit it off the end, or, you know, obviously he's one of the best athletes in the world. Honestly, he should be the best hitter in the world, but this type of swing is partly what holds him back. So let's take a look at some more clips here. This is a more linear approach with the hands, is to throw the hands forward, be short to the ball, and take the knob to the ball and the bat will follow. This approach doesn't uh, address the kinetic chain and it doesn't stay true to the path of the bat or the shape in the arms. It's, it's, a, it's wrong on a lot of fronts. Uh, but that's what's taught even today uh, pretty widely. This is another linear approach. And one thing that this does, the earlier you push your hands away from your back shoulder, the less adjustable you are to any type of off-speed pitch. Um, our goal in our swing should be to get the bat behind the ball and keep it behind the ball as long as possible. The more we push our hands forward and the more we... we force our swing to, to the ball early, um, we're forcing the bat out of the zone early as well. So you'll see from the best hitters of all time that they keep their hands back um, longer, much longer than this demonstration. Um, we'll take a look at some more now. Here's David Ortiz. And again, linear principles uh, hands to the ball, throw the knob, uh, shift the weight forward. They just don't describe this type of swing. And again, the rotational swing doesn't describe the shape in the arms and where he actually swings from. So he kind of skips through this slot position. And his lower body does lead the upper body. And he does match plane. So some of the rotational hitting concepts or right, again, they just fail to explain the actual path of the bat and the path of the barrel uh, in the first half of the swing.
And for me, the swing starts when the bat moves. So this is a good example of using the kinetic chain, um, producing energy from the ground up and the release of energy that can happen here. And this is really what a linear swing fails to produce. Uh, this is a very powerful source of energy. Ken Griffey Jr. probably did it better than anybody. And you really have to watch the clips in, in fast motion. And I'll show you a couple of those to really see the explosion of energy and how powerful this type of mechanic can be of leaving your hands back and the tension and the energy that's built up as he strides here and his lower body leads and he's keeping his elbow back. It's back, it's back, it's back. And then bang, the swing's allowed to come through and it's really powerful. Here's Carlos Gonzalez using that concept. You can see his hip kind of snap the swing gets very explosive because this buildup of energy happens. And this is really uh, huge if you want to create swing quickness and really be adjustable to, to all pitches. And really, at the end of the day, that's what it's about uh, as a hitter is not who can hit the farthest, but who can hit the ball hard the most consistently. Robinson Cano is another one of the very best at that. Again, you can see how far the hands get back and how far the elbow draws back and really pulls the upper body and the bat through with the lower body. Here's Dustin Pedroia. And you really see this from you know Ryan Braun, Mookie Betts, some of the smaller guys that are able to produce a ton of power. This is how they're doing it. They're really drawing back with that elbow and, and letting the back leg power the swing. This is a good example of rotational hitting and, and the concept behind it. And that is to get the bat level with the shoulder plane and keep it on that plane all the way through. And while I agree that the bat should get on this plane, uh, again, it fails to describe the early bat speed and the shape of the arms and the position where hitters are actually swinging from. So this type of swing can be good and, and is good for a batting practice setting and where it really fails is, is where the energy is going and the more horizontal this turn gets the more we're pulling off of the baseball. And another linear concept here is to really swing down and, and try to get to contact in the shortest path possible and, and ultimately I've talked about this in other videos this isn't what's happening in a, in a real swing. Um, the shoulders have to tilt and the bat has to be level with the shoulders and you have to get the barrel behind the ball early. But this is another linear concept that just doesn't uh, describe what's actually happening in the swing. Here's Barry Bonds using some rotational concepts, but again, this shape in the arms and this path of the bat isn't explained in a rotational swing. This depth that he's able to create, this bat speed back in here, is really what allows him to not have to turn the body off the ball as he goes to swing the bat. The swing can happen very deep in this process. Here's another swing here that rotational hitting fails to describe is the more vertical the swing plane gets, the less rotational uh, hitting philosophies can describe the swing accurately. So again, he's made this triangle shape in the arms. If you want to learn more about that, check out my other videos. Uh, but he's created this triangle and he's rocking this triangle kind of under his head and into contact. And that move is really skipping that slot position. It's skipping through it. And the, the swing and the bat speed is really starting from this position right here with the bat tipped forward and the back elbow drawn back. That's really where he's creating bat speed from. And you can tell that by uh, looking at the baseball in a lot of clips, you'll see that the bat's still in this position, uh, even when the ball's pretty much halfway to the players. So they're really swinging from this position. They're not repositioning to the slot position and then turning with the shoulders. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel. Again, this has been Sean Plew from Hitterish.com. Catch you next time.